Queen Elizabeth II delivered a rare public address on the coronavirus. Coronavirus. It's the coronavirus. Coronavirus. I've developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. The new coronavirus is thought to have originated in bats, and the initial outbreak has been linked to a live animal market in China. But there are other conspiracy theories about where it may have come from. So, what should we believe? Understanding how the virus first infected humans may help us beat the pandemic, or at least mitigate its damage. It can help scientists develop new vaccines and find better ways to treat patients. Unfortunately, there's a catch. It is notoriously difficult to pin down the origin of a virus. Tracing the source of a virus is,、um, I guess, between animal and human populations, can be really difficult. This is Maya Raba. She's an epidemiologist at the Oxford University Clinical Research Unit in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. So it's not easy to identify which animals might be infected with with these viruses. We kind of have to instead go on what what a lot of us refer to as fishing expeditions, where we sample whatever animals we can find within the best study framework that we can come up with, and go from there. Let's start with bats. In January, a group of Chinese scientists found that some viruses in bats share 96% of their genetic makeup with the new coronavirus found in humans. Their findings were published by Nature, a leading scientific journal. But the story is not so simple. Bats are what scientists call a natural reservoir for coronaviruses. It means they carry many of the viruses, but the pathogens don't make them sick. It's been sampled that basically. You can actually find lots and lots of different types of coronaviruses within the same bat. This is John Nichols. He's a professor of pathology at the University of Hong Kong. They can replicate in these bats and not kill them off, and they can just keep on proliferating and they can be mutating. But just because a virus similar to the coronavirus is found in bats doesn't mean the virus jumped directly from bats to humans. Researchers believe other animals may have acted as a host for the virus before it infected humans. For instance, the MERS coronavirus was found to have circulated in camels for 20 years before it jumped to people. The SARS coronavirus is thought to have infected people from a cat-like animal called civets. These are two of the best-known coronaviruses, and they each killed hundreds of people around the world. Pangolins, or scaly anteaters, are another suspected intermediary for the new coronavirus. Pangolin scales are used in traditional Chinese medicine for treating various ailments. Their meat is eaten as a delicacy in parts of China and Vietnam. This means they're heavily trafficked in Asia. Researchers said they found coronavirus strains in pangolins that were about 90% similar to those found in people. But scholars who reviewed the studies have called them inconclusive. The hunt continues. This is Huanan Seafood Market. It is located in a bustling part of the central Chinese city of Wuhan. This wet market is believed to be ground zero for the coronavirus outbreak. On January 1st, the city's health authorities closed the market after they found many coronavirus patients worked at or lived near the market. Wet markets are common across Asia and got their name because they sell meat, vegetables, fruit, and fish, as well as dry goods. Before its closure, the market sold a variety of seafood, vegetables, and animals such as frogs, hedgehogs, and snakes, according to the local authorities. However, the website of a wild game store at the market listed fox, bamboo rats, and dozens of other mammals and birds for sale, both alive and butchered. I mean, I, I enjoy going to the local wet market. I think it's.、Uh... It's a very、um, exciting,、um, colorful, stimulating environment. The problem with them, though, is it's very difficult to maintain adequate hygiene standards. This is Dirk Pfeiffer. He's a professor of epidemiology at the City University of Hong Kong. Does that mean we should not allow those anymore? I think that's a difficult、um, uh, decision to make. Would it be possible to make them safer? Of course it is. You see, in theory it is. So you just have better hygiene, better cleaning procedures, and you also monitor what is being sold. Recently, this theory of the Wuhan wet market being the source of the outbreak has also been challenged. 
A group of Chinese scientists examined the data collected from the first 41 hospitalized coronavirus patients and found 13 of them had no apparent link to the market. They found that the first patient had reportedly never been to the market, and this patient had no link with the other early cases. Their peer-reviewed findings were published by The Lancet on January 24th. Experts are now investigating if the virus had been spreading among people before it got to this wet market. In March, the South China Morning Post reported that China's first confirmed coronavirus case might date back to November 17th, which was three weeks earlier than the first case previously acknowledged by the World Health Organization. That changes the story somewhat, potentially, because maybe the, the seafood market wasn't where it happened. Maybe that's just where it was amplified. Maybe people got it somewhere else, took it to the market, and for some reason the market became a, a first focus of transmission. So we have it, it's very murky, the picture is very murky at the moment. And, 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 I, and actually that's not a good situation to be in. We do think we've got the bat at one end, we've got the human at the other. But we are very unsure about what happened in between. I think certainly we can't focus on that market as, as an absolute, as the absolute sort of origin of, of the virus anymore. We need to start looking outside and I think talking to people, understanding their exposures and their risks early on in this, in this outbreak is going to be important. With all this uncertainty, some people have turned to other theories. Remember that Nature paper linking the new coronavirus to bats? That research was led by Shi Zheng Li. She's a virologist at the Wuhan Institute of Virology. She has been accused of being responsible for the outbreak. Some suggest the virus could be a manufactured bioweapon from her lab. She has publicly rejected all the claims, and scientists around the world backed her up. On February 19th, as many as 27 public health experts from eight countries issued a statement to reject accusations and said overwhelming evidence concludes that this coronavirus originated in wildlife. Other conspiracy theorists have blamed 5G, the fifth generation mobile communication system. They believe 5G either causes the coronavirus or that the radiation weakens one's immune system and makes them more susceptible to the virus. Stephen Powis, the medical director for the National Health Service in England, said the theory is utter rubbish and the worst kind of fake news. And then there is Zhao Lijian, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson who promoted on Twitter a conspiracy theory that the virus was brought to China by U.S. Army attendees in the military world games held in Wuhan in October. Zhao's allegation was later rebuked by the U.S. government. The U.S. authorities have promoted another hypothesis. The Trump administration says it wants to investigate whether the virus was accidentally leaked from research facilities in Wuhan. So far, there's no evidence for that either. On March 11th, 2020, the World Health Organization declared the coronavirus a pandemic. This is the first pandemic caused by a coronavirus. And we have never before seen a pandemic that can be controlled. So yes, the coronavirus is a threat to all of us. But even if it's impossible to stop it at will, there are things we can do to minimize its harm and, more important, prepare for future epidemics. The coronavirus is just one of many pathogens in the natural world that have crossed paths with people. What we do now will decide the course of this global health crisis and the next one.